Hi everyone, this is my report, the chemistry guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss the polarity of electrodes for a rechargeable battery. Now, what we have here in this diagram is an example of a rechargeable battery involving this sodium sulfur secondary cell, which is a rechargeable battery. And during this charge, the information given is my sodium will be oxidized to sodium plus cations and the sulfur will be reduced to a polysulfide ion Sx2-. So if I look at this cell setup, we notice that the sodium is at the center and it is in direct contact with electrode J. So therefore the electrode J will be the electrode that is linked directly to the sodium. While your sulfur, which is on the outside, is tied or linked directly to electrode K. So electrode K will be associated directly to sulfur. So given this information during the discharge of this rechargeable battery, sodium is oxidized, sulfur is reduced, what would happen to the polarity of the electrodes J and K during the charging of this rechargeable battery and during discharging of this rechargeable battery? Would the polarities of the electrodes stay the same or would it change during charging or discharging. So what we have to do is we have to consider what happens during discharging, which electrode is the anode, which electrode is the cathode, and from there we can deduce the charges from there, and we do the same thing when we are considering the charging of this battery. So let's consider discharging first. Now during discharging, you are using the battery as it is, there's a stop chemical energy inside this battery, there's a reaction that takes place in your electrochemical cell and basically what is happening is you are generating flow of electrons or generating electricity because of that. So in terms of energy conversion, this is chemical energy to electrical energy. We are converting the stock chemical energy inside the battery to electricity. So during discharging, we will treat this cell as an electrochemical cell. And given this information, during discharging, sodium is oxidized and sulfur is reduced. So I know that the electrode that is directly in contact with our sodium will be the anode because it is oxidation. So the electrode will be my anode and the electrode that is in direct contact with the sulfur which is reduced will be the cathode because we know that oxidation occurs at the anode and reduction occurs at the cathode. So the next thing we have to do is we have to figure out the charges. Now remember for an electrochemical cell, the anode is negatively charged and the cathode is positively charged. So we would expect the anode at the site for your sodium to be a negative charge and we would expect the cathode at the site of your sulfur to be a positive charge. Now just to briefly run this through, why for an electrochemical cell, the anode is negatively charged and the cathode is positively charged? Remember. During discharging, there's a chemical reaction that takes place, a redox reaction taking place, and because of that, I'm generating flow of electrons. So in terms of process is, sodium will be oxidized first, and therefore, oxidation is the loss of electron, and all these excess electrons will be deposited at the anode, and this is the reason why the anode will be negatively charged. Now, involving my sulfur, sulfur will undergo reduction, and reduction is the gain of electrons. So where will sulfur gain these electrons from? It will have to withdraw or gain all these electrons from the electrode. So the electrode that is in direct contact with reduction will be positively charged because they are losing all these electrons to this reduction of sulfur. So this is the reason why my cathode is positively charged for an electrochemical cell. So what this means is if I come back to this diagram, I will expect electrode J which is in direct contact with sodium to be a minus charge and electrode K, which is in direct contact with sulfur to be a positive charge. Now next, how about during charging? Now during charging, what we are doing is we are basically doing the opposite process. The reaction has used up all the reactants and now what we want to do is we want to convert whatever reactant that has been reacted off, I want to convert it back. So what we do is we pump electricity into the cell and we force a chemical reaction to occur inside this cell. Basically the reaction that we want is to reverse the process that has taken place during discharging. So the process that we want will be, I want to convert Na plus back to Na, 
convert sodium cation back to sodium and I want to convert SX2- back to sulfur so that I can use this battery again. So basically in terms of the energy conversion will be electrical energy to chemical energy. It's just the reverse of discharging. So this means that during charging of this rechargeable battery, this cell is functioning as an electrolytic cell because electrolysis basically is you pump electricity through an electrolyte and you force a chemical reaction to occur inside this electrolytic cell. So therefore the energy conversion during charging and discharging, it is the direct opposite. And if you think about it, involving an electrochemical cell and electrolytic cell, they're just the direct opposite of each other in terms of energy conversion. Electrochemical cell is converting chemical energy to electrical energy. Electrolytic cell is converting electrical energy to chemical energy. They're just the direct opposite of each other. So how about the charge of the electrode, which is what we want to figure out. Now, we know that the process that we want involving the charging of this rechargeable battery is I want Na plus to go back to Na. Basically, this is a reduction. So we would expect the electrode at the sodium side will be now the cathode because we want reduction to occur at the electrode at the sodium side. And involving sulfur, we want oxidation to occur. We want SX2- to be oxidized to sulfur. So the electrode that is in direct contact with the sulfur will be the anode. And for electrolytic cell, what we know is for electrolytic cell, cathode will be negatively charged and anode will be positively charged. Usually the very easy way for me to remember that your cathode is negatively charged is your cathode is supposed to attract the cations, Na+, plus, so therefore it has to be negatively charged for it to attract the cations. And the anode for electrolytic cell has to be positively charged because the anode will attract my anions and anions are negative so the anode has to be positively charged to attract these anions. Now what you notice is in terms of the charge of the electrode at the sodium side, during discharging and during charging, interestingly both of them are negative. During discharging your electrode at the sodium side, it is the anode, it is negatively charged. During charging the electrode at the sodium side becomes the cathode, but it is still negatively charged. And involving the electrode at the sulfur side, the idea is the same. For discharging the electrode at the sulfur side, it is the cathode and it's positively charged. But during charging, this electrode that is in contact with the sulfur becomes the anode, but it is still positively charged. So if we put everything into the diagram, I think it is easier for us to visualize this. So this is actually what is happening during the discharging of this rechargeable battery and the charging of this rechargeable battery. Now during this charging, remember the cell functions as an electrochemical cell converting stored chemical energy to electrical energy and the process taking place is sodium will be oxidized to Na+, plus, sulfur will be reduced to SX2- minus, and the electrode that is in contact with sodium which is electrode J, this will be the anode since this is oxidation and then anode for electrochemical cell is negatively charged. Now involving the electrode K that is in contact with sulfur, it is the cathode because it is reduction and cathode for electrochemical cell, it is positively charged. So J it is a minus charge, K it is a plus charge. Now involving charging, during the process of charging, what we are doing is it is the other way around, converting electrical energy to chemical energy. And what we have is your sodium undergoes reduction Na plus to Na and electrode J that is in direct contact with sodium since this is the cathode it will be negatively charged for electrolytic cell and involving sulfur sulfur SX2- will be oxidized to sulfur and electrode K that is in direct contact with sulfur it is the anode anode for electrolytic cell will be positively charged. If you put them side by side I think it is very very clear cut what is interesting is the process is different. The electrode actually changes in terms of the process. During discharging, J is the anode. During charging, J is the cathode. But interestingly, the charge of the electrode remains the same. Both of them remain as a minus charge during charging and discharging. Now, similarly, involving electrode K, the idea is the same. During discharging, electrode K functions as the cathode and it is positively charged. During charging electrode K, it is the anode, but it is still 
positively charged. So electrode K will remain as positive charge during charging and discharging. All right, so that was the discussion involving understanding the polarities of our electrodes for a rechargeable battery during charging and discharging. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. I'll see you next week.